That's good. Good to see all of y'all. If you have your Bible, you might turn with us to Psalms 124. Psalms 124, we're going to look at that, and we're going to look at some other passages of Scripture, and then we're going to do whatever else we do and go to the house. Amen? Y'all glad to be here? What did you say? Uh, and choir practice, okay. Psalms 124, we're going to have to read it all to get to the one thing I want. So uh, to come out here, we're going to talk about, uh, be starting in verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wealth was kindled against us, wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that's what we want to talk about uh, tonight. Uh, Peter wrote that in, in this that there would be perilous times uh, that would come. He, among the many reasons he said that it would be perilous times, uh, was that men would be boasters, proud, and that they would be lovers of their self more than lovers of God. And and that's the tragedy of our day. That is the worst thing that could ever happen is for men to love their self more than they love God. And that's exactly what is happening. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, people hung up on their self and what's going on in their life instead of being with the commitment that is necessary as we walk with the Lord. Amen? And so uh, tonight we're going to be talking about that name. If you notice there in the last verse that I read, he said, Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, and I want to tell you, can I tell y'all, uh, things have not changed since this was written. Our help is still in the name of the Lord, and I'm going to give you some script, scripture for that here in a minute, and, uh, and we'll talk about it further, but uh, we need to understand and we need to realize, uh, uh, you know, no matter how much we analyze the problem, that's not going to help it. Uh, what's going to help the problem is, is, is God through prayer and through the power of his name. If you'll notice in the Psalms there, in this particular Psalm, it talks about the things that would have been different had it not been for the intervention of the Lord. Had it not been for, it, at the end there, the conclusion, had it not been for the name of the Lord, the enemies would have uh, done what they would have done and everything else would have went south. Uh, but thanks be unto God, uh, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Isn't that right? And so that's where we want to go, and that's what I want you to see. Uh, you know, as perilous as it seems and as, uh, as, as dangerous as it might be feel like it is living in this world uh, that we're living in, uh, I still say that our God is greater than all of this stuff that's going on. What do y'all say? And so uh, because our God is greater, uh, then we will not be defeated, we will not be overwhelmed, but we will endure to the end. Amen? And so that's what we need to decide, and that's what we need to do. That's, what, that's why a switch is needed. That's why re, rebirth, spiritual birth, is necessary in order that we can endure to the end because man by nature is not enduring. Man by nature has failed. I mean, he failed in the garden, and he's been failing ever since. Only Christ in us uh, can help us not to fail. Only Christ in us can help us get to the end. But our claim has is, is got to be staked in Christ. Our claim, uh, which is our life, our conversation, as the Bible talks about it, everything about that has got to be set on the record and staked because of who Christ is, not because of what we have done. You know, and I know, uh, that there are very few people who control the great, greater interest of the United States of America. And I'm talking about very few. And they control because of wealth. And they control because of who they are. They have amassed uh, such a support. They turn the wheels about everything that goes on in America. And that's why in, in order for America to change, God has to come back. Those names have to mean nothing 
but the name that has been given us is Christ Jesus, our Lord, has to be everything. And we're going to see that, how, how we all these things can turn around, and it's going to be because of the name of the Lord. Amen? Y'all believe that? That's the only hope we have, right? If we don't believe that, you see, when you stop and think about it, I was thinking today, and I think about this often, I was thinking today about the children that are born with birth defects. How do you relate that to Psalms 139 where it says, God formed you in your mother's womb? How do you relate those things together? You remember that, that man was healed and, and, and they asked him who committed, asked Jesus, who committed the sin? And Jesus said, neither one of them. Uh, he was born this way that, that he might bring glory to God. And so uh, when you think about all that, now there are, there are some things that happened. Uh, there are mistakes medically. There are things that happen to change what God has done. But uh, there are things. Uh, why would God form things? So when you begin to think about and you begin to talk about God, you've got to realize you won't always understand everything God does. And that's the important thing that we need to remember. We can't get mad at God because it's not happened the way we think it should have happened. Because it didn't come out exactly the way we prayed it. We just got to thank God he answers prayer. And when God answers prayer, uh, then God has the answer and he knows how better to answer. And so we accept what God gives us. Amen. That's the way that stuff works. And you got to get, I got four scriptures we're going to talk about uh, relating to the name. And, uh, and I hope uh, that you, when we get through with it, that, uh, you know, we'll have all this stuff together. And we'll begin with the, with the name of Jesus Christ for salvation. Uh, and that's in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, therefore, uh, there's none other name given among men whereby you must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. It's, it's necessary. There's something in that name of Jesus. We need, we need to understand this. Uh, you know, God, I uh, told y'all before about the, about the respect. It was, it was respect or fear, however how you want to name it. But it was the respect people had for, for God's name. They called him Yahweh, which is a shortened version. And, and, of course, there were many other in the Hebrew references. But they were afraid to call God by his name. That's how much they reverenced and feared the Lord. Wonder what happened to all that. Amen. I wonder what happened to people uh, reverencing the name of the Lord so much that, that they didn't get over. They, they, they wouldn't call him by his full name. They, it's like the, like the publican on the altar before the Lord wouldn't even lift his head up. And uh, because he, he knew he was not worthy uh, to be in the presence, but God uh, made him worthy because he sent him an invitation. And that's, that's the important thing. But so, uh, none other name given among men uh, whereby they must be saved. One of the great discussions of our day is uh, is whether or not that those who have professed the name of Jesus, whether uh, they understand their profession and whether or not they're saved. See, what happens is, and James kind of uh, alluded to, to this, and, and there's only five chapters in James, and they're very direct and to the point. But James, one thing that James brings out, and that's the half-brother of the Lord, James said, uh, if your faith that is, is demonstrated by the works that you do. Faith without works is dead. That's what he said. Look at the church today. Look at the dead faith that's in the church. I mean, guys, that ain't pointing no finger at nobody. Just look at the dead faith. Look at the silent lips that refuse to testify about Christ who lives in their life. That's faith without works. And Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Look at the fruit. I read that from Jude. Jude said they're twice dead, plucked up by the roots, having no fruit. Read that Sunday night. And so when you, when you come around to all this stuff, it's not some man judging you. It's not somebody making, uh, determining whether or not you're saved. It's just the fact of seeing the fruit of whether or not you're saved. You can see fruit. Can't, you, can't y'all see fruit? You sure can. You can see fruit. Fruit means, you know, it says the fruit of the Spirit are these, and it talks about, and then it talks about the works of the Spirit. And it, it goes down, and then it tells that the works of the flesh are these, and the works of the Spirit are these things. And so there, it, it all comes out in, in our lifestyle uh, when Jesus comes into our life. I mean, Jesus can't help but come out. 
He can't help but come out in, in the decisions we make, the choices we make. He can't help but come out in the way we talk, the way we act. Everything, everything changes because old things pass away and all things have become new. Y'all get that? And so, but that's where it is, and, and that's what happens. And if that don't happen, uh, then something went wrong, didn't it? And so I just want y'all to see that, and I want you to understand that, and I want you to know. And here's the way. You can, you can place yourself in before a spiritual mirror. And, uh, and you, can, you can place it. See, what happens all the time probably with some of you is the same thing, thing that happened to me. Judy said, Tom, you didn't comb the back of your hair, but I can't see it. And you know, we laugh about that, and that's the truth. I can't see it. But she says, well, you got a mirror there in the drawer. Hold that mirror up and look at what you can't see. And so, as a spiritual sense, y'all think about that. Don't just look at what you, you, you can look in a mirror dimly and you, what you can't see, but look at the whole of it all so you can see everything about you. Because everything about you as a child of God is deathly important to someone else. See, that's the deal right there. And so when you, when you do that, and so I say, well, help me. Would you help me? Uh, you know, uh, cover that spot or whatever needs, you know. Sometimes it sticks out because I just blow what I can see and it sticks out back there. Y'all know, see? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And so uh, when you do all that, well, the Bible, here's what the Bible says. Examine yourself. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm examining how I look. And, and that's self examine he, he said, examine yourselves before God has to examine you. You see, uh, and so when, when you examine yourself, you know, you, uh, I mean, most, the reason most people look in a the mirror, they've just, maybe they've been in the shower or getting in the shower, or maybe they're combing their hair, washing their face, but they, they look in that mirror and, it, and I kid Fred and them all the time. I said, Fred, come here, hurry, Fred, come here. I want you to see what's in the mirror. I said, Fred, how did I get so, you know? But he said, yeah, I don't know how you got there. See, he wants to be all ugly about it. But, uh, but, but the truth of it is, uh, you know, come and see. Come and look in the mirror and see my life is the invitation we give to that world out there. You know what that world wants out there? They want a church that is a church of truth. I mean, they want, they want a people of God that are a people of God. That's why the whole, that's why the whole deal, and we're going through a political revolution in America. That's why we are. They are sick of that bunch up there. Did you know that the world's sick of this bunch that call themselves the church? They're not, the fruit are not there. Their roots are dead. They're twice dead, plucked up by the root because they love their self more than they love the God that they say of their salvation. So there we have it. I mean, how much plainer can that book be written? And there we have it. So it's up to us. But when somebody else tells us, it makes us mad. And then we, we, we go somewhere where people don't tell us that. But uh, see, that's the, the truth of it all. The truth of it all, you know what they said about the preaching at Pentecost? These fellows act like they're drunk. It's too early in the morning to be drunk. And, of course, they spoke and said, no, we're not drunk with wine. We're full of the Holy Ghost. We're full of the Holy Ghost of God. And, and, and how many people was it got saved? 8,000, I believe it was. Pretty, must have been pretty good drunk being full of the Holy Ghost. As Paul said, be full of the Spirit, not in excess of wine. And so uh, it, that's, that's what that's all about. That being saved, uh, there's none other name that you can be saved in. And, but yet that's being taught all over the world uh, that, hey, leave the Muslims alone. Mohammed is their God. Mohammed is equal to our God. That's a lie. He's not. Mohammed is dead as a dog. Our God lives. So that's the lie of men. But if you, criticize, if you say anything about that, then you get on that hate list where you hate of hatred and then the FBI gets after you. But the truth of it is, I'm not going to ever believe in Muhammad or Joseph Smith or any of them other people. I'm just not going to believe in them because there ain't no God to them. Every one of them's dead, but my God. <laughs> Amen. And he lives. And because he lives, I'm supposed to be alive too. 
So be careful when you take on that name. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who, who, who are named Jesus. Uh, they, they named a lot of the Spanish people, named their sons Jesus. They're not Jesus. They just have a name that's spelled the same way, but they're not Jesus. Because I'm going to tell y'all Christians something. Listen to me now. This is biblical proof of how, what I've been saying and how you're supposed to live. We look in a mirror dim. You know I was talking about that mirror? You see it? We, we see dimly in there right now. But look here. But when he doth appear, we shall be like him. Listen to me. Jesus don't make us Jesus. But I'm telling you something, being born again makes us like him. And so, and, and when we see him, the Bible says we will be like him. So guys, y'all figure that out, amen? You got to figure that out because that is a biblical truth. What does that mean? Well, just read the scripture, live in the scripture, sleep in the scripture, and I'll let all your life, let him be seeking you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else in life will be added to you of such things as you have need of. God will honor and will send those things to you. That's it. And so that's what, that's what that name of Jesus does for you. It sets you in a place where God wants you to see it. Well, what happens is, uh, you know, People don't talk about hell. I was talking to some people this week. They, people want to hear about hell. There ain't no preaching about hell. Well, if you, if you start preaching hell, they'll either run and not come or it'll, it'll bring conviction on their life. That's, that's the truth. You know, well, uh, preacher, I, I'll just tell you, I, 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 I leave feeling bad. Well, good. Thank God. Spirit's working. Amen. Hey, if you're living in sin, I want you to leave feeling bad until you get it straightened out. Hey, but look here. If I'm preaching against a, a, something I just, that the Bible teaches and it may not even bother you, don't leave feeling bad. You leave rejoicing. But the one who's involved in such things as the Bible said we ought not to be, uh, they ought to leave feeling bad if they don't do something about it. Amen? Amen. And, and so that's the truth of it. You, you know, if, if you stop and think about it, have y'all have y'all ever had a disagreement with anybody, any human being? Any of y'all ever had a disagreement with any human being? How did you feel when you had that disagreement and you had to stand there and look at each other? You didn't feel very good. You didn't very, really didn't very want to be around them at that moment, right? That's what happens in churches. People will disagree and then they can't come back and look each other in the face and so they'll go somewhere else or don't come at all. A man that ain't living right don't want to hear he ain't living right. Can I tell you? A person that ain't living right don't want to hear preachers like me. They want to find somebody else and they like that music where the lights, so you hook them up to the lights and the whole church looks like they're having a rock fest instead of a church service. Amen? I'll tell you, y'all know what I call that? J-U-N-K. Junk. There ain't nothing to that junk. I can go down there at the beach and find all that I want at the pad down there. If I want that junk, that's where I'll go. But if I want to worship, I'm going to come to the Lord's house. And there won't be no blinking lights in here twiddling to worship by. Amen? Won't be no black lamps in here where everything looks like you got a white shirt on, you know, everything moving. It won't be like that in here. Amen? You say, well, you old goat, you ain't going to live very much long. We'll do what we want to, where the Lord won't let you. Amen? <laughs> he won't let you do it. And so, praise the Lord. And, and thank you for his name. So, salvation. There's no other name. Got to have that Jesus name. That Y'all remember... Over there, when the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus. Uh, and so, that it's, let's, we ain't got time to do all that, but we'll get back to it. Amen? And, and we'll, we'll surely get back to it. Let's go to John 14, verses 13. John 14, 13. Come on, flip over there with me. I want you to see this and make you a little note there. 14, 13. That, that kind of rhymes, don't it? It says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, this is Jesus now, you know, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, 
that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We got some problems somewhere. Because we've asked and they still some stuff ain't getting done. What's going on here? There's something wrong with the, with the heart that's asking. There's something wrong somewhere, but there ain't nothing wrong with the name you asking it in. You see, we've come to a time such as, such as we're living in. We've come to a time when, when, when the, the woe that we have upon us right now is the woe of self. We've come to a time uh, where we're always asking. Aren't we asking? Well, what's wrong? Why ain't we getting? Because Jesus said, you ask anything in my name, and I will do it that the Father would be glorified in the Son. How are we going to reconcile that scripture there to the lack that's in our life? When we are so hindered and so distracted by all these things, you know what happened? We are more world conditioned than we are heaven conditioned. We've been lifting worldly weights instead of building up the spirit man and so the world is heavier on us and the world pulls us down. It, and it pulls our prayer. It pulls everything away. It hinders everything in our time of need. That's what happens. It, it pulls it away. You see, they, they tell us, eat more protein the older you get. What protein builds mess, uh, muscles, right? I still got I've got a big shirt on. But, you, you know, they say protein builds muscle. And so, uh, but the truth of it is, it probably does. But I'll tell you, good eating builds muscle. I, I tell you, they're going to naturally promote that because the, the people that, that make protein, it's about $20 for 12 bottles. And, and so it, they make it a right good lick on that thing. When they, anybody they can talk into buying 12 bottles for $20, $18, they, that, they made a profit. It's like the beer commercial with the, with, the, with the lobster from Maine. It don't get no better than this. And there's many of them lobster and them cases of bud that they can sell don't get no better than this. Every little retread and retard running around out there wants to get him a six pack. Say, preacher, I don't appreciate you calling me a retread or retard. Well, quit drinking it. See, that's the deal. That's the whole deal. Okay, then. Man, this, this, how do they advertise? They advertise in such a way to pull us and attract us to what they're trying to sell us. That's what, don't y'all know that Satan is the author of lies? Don't y'all know that that, that the candidate said, man, if I can get to Washington, I'm going to do this for you, and there ain't one up there that's done anything they said they would do. They lied there. They, yes, they have. They, they lied there, and they lied up there, and they still lying. Amen? And if you'll just next year, if you'll just elect me, I'm going to show you how to get this new plan for Medicare or whatever. I'm going to show you how to, man, we're going to get a new tax plan. I'm going to show you we're going to build more bridges and highways. And, and man, we gonna, our military is going to be so strong. Everybody's going to just stand there and hold your pocket open because money's going to flow into your life. That's a lie. But that's what they tell you. And here's the bad part. We believe it and keep electing See, y'all ever seen a sucker? He got a round mouth. Suck stuff and he can't bite. Flounder can't. You know, flounder can't open his mouth and bite. Y'all know that, right? He has to. So if you're fishing for flounder, he's going to take that minnow and go. And you got to sit there and hold that pole till he swallows it. And when he sucks it down and you set that hook, you got a flounder. That's what Satan does. He's going to throw that thing out there and wait on you to 
And when you swallow it, he got you. He's going to hook it. you. He's got him one on the line. Anything you ask in my name, I'll do it to honor God. Let's reconcile why it, then it ain't happening. Why ain't, why ain't it happening? What you ask in his name? The Bible says, you, isn't it James, it says you have not because you ask not, because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your lust. Might be why God didn't hear you. See, we get all out there and get self-centered, narcissistic, I think is the word they use. You get off out there and, and your world is you and, and everything that you have. Uh, you know, you ever seen these people post on Facebook, their kids are better than your kids? Their house is bigger than your house? Their job better than your job? I mean, they, it, it's just on and on and on and on and on. You see, that's, that, that's that stuff. Ain't got no friends. People put up with them. They don't like people like that. Just the way things are. And, but they put up with them. And, and, and I, I was talking to Tony, and, and it's time we quit putting up with it. That's the whole deal. Just talk it out. Call it out and talk it out. Fix the problem. And that way, we move on. So, look here. Did the Bible say you can have what you asked for? How many heard that? Where are you going to find that at? John 14, 13, and 14. I just gave you that, right? So, when you're not getting what you've asked for, in the name of Jesus Christ, where are you going to go look? You're going to go to John 14, 13, and 14. But right up above John 14, 13, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. There's that salvation thing coming into work up there. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you if I go to prepare a place. For you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Uh, and he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. And, and of course, uh, old Doubt and Thomas... <laughs> Why did they name me Thomas? Oh, Doubt and Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. How long you got to be with me? I am that way, he said. See? And so when you, when you put all this stuff together, just turn over there to John 14. There's many, there's promises there. Those promises, if one ain't real, none are real. And so if the Lord uh, said that he was going to prepare a place and you're looking for a heavenly home that he went to prepare a place for you, then you need to be looking for an answer to that prayer that you ask in his name. And he said, I'll do it. Amen? That's good right there. <laughs> and then, so we got, we only got two more things. Amen? Uh, Philippians 2, verse 9, if you want to turn over there. I just, I just love to talk about this, na this name. Somebody wants to sing that old hymn, what a lovely name, the name of Jesus. I tell you, we can't do it like Vestal Goodman can, but boy, we might could get through some of it. What? I'll tell you, I've seen her sing it and sit there and cry, feeling the presence of the Spirit. Mm. Telling you right now. It said that Jesus, verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things heaven, things in earth, things underneath the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's that name. Name above every name. The name of Jesus. Mm. You ever heard people say, get AD, they'd hit their finger and say, Jesus Christ. Hmm? That's a slang use of that name, isn't it? That's profanity, is what that is. To use it, the name of Jesus. 
as a by as a byword. The scripture says that he humbled himself and came in the form of a man, Jesus, and died. Listen to even the death of the cross. I don't know. I've never seen that before. That just jumped on me when I was reading that the Lord's going to give me a message on that. Because it said, look here. It says, and he became obedient unto death. Listen, even the death of the cross. I had never tied that together before. I read it, but I'd never tied that together. Had you tied that together? That cross was a terrible, uh, terrible instrument of death. Number one, because people that died their own, uh, they were humiliated to death in every way. They were often punished severely before they got to the cross, and they, the, the shame and the humiliation was cursed as the man that hangeth on a tree, and that was the Son of God that hanged on that tree naked. Wouldn't be no problem today. People love nakedness today. But it was a problem for the Savior of the world. He took that shame that we're that we're living out today, Brother Mitch. He took that shame for us then as he hanged on that what we call the old rugged cross. And so uh, when you think about that name above every name. We're not just dealing with somebody here that, that, that we could meet somewhere along the way and, and, and uh, you know, he'd just be a nice person to know when we get in the jam. We're not just dealing with, with, with the president of the, of the greatest nation in the world, the United States. We're dealing with Jesus Christ, God's son, the savior of mankind, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords who has been given a name above every name. Uh, in heaven and in earth, he's been given that name, Jesus. That's why we can ask in that name because everything in heaven and earth has been made a footstool for him. We can ask in that name and he will do it. Ask in that name above every name and he will do it. It says, we, I just told you, for John 14, 13, he will do it. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? So what, what, what we've been doing, and you know, and we're still looking for a revival. We had our meeting the other night. We, we praying for a revival. We, we planning for a revival. We got people busy uh, making up letters and, and planning things to send out. We planning for a revival. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure that when, when it comes time for revival, there won't be one thing lacking that we should have done that we didn't do, prayer included. And that we build a theme for revival around a name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's the only way revival is going to come. And you know what? It's not going to come by hanging a bunch of needy kids' name on a Christmas tree and taking them a present even though that would be a good thing to do if you can. That's, that's not what's going to get us the glory, is how many names we put on the tree or how many toys we have in the toy store. That's not what's going to get us to heaven. What's going to get us the glory is the name of Jesus Christ, that every man must confess in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we're going to have to live and deal with all that stuff, and I hope that we will live and do that. And then finally in Acts uh, chapter 8, if you want to flip over there, it's right there, right behind us. Acts chapter 8 uh, is where Philip uh, went to the eunuch. And, uh, and the eunuch was reading in Isaiah, as the scripture says, in verse 35. Uh, and we, know, we see the reaction of Philip. It says, in verse 34, it says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. He's talking about in Isaiah he, where the scripture says that he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shears, he opened not his mouth and, and Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Jesus. We got a good church but don't preach this church to people. Preach Jesus to people. 
preached the name of Jesus Christ. He preached unto him Jesus. And Jesus was the lamb that was dumb before her shears. Uh, you know, that, that message we had from where uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, when they'd all come into Jerusalem there and, uh, for the Passover. Well, you know what? There was a day and a time that, uh, at, that they had to kill the Passover lamb. Y'all, did y'all remember that scripture? And when Jesus went with his disciples and, and they, they went up in that room and, and they prayed and, and he pointed out the fact that Judas was a betrayer and all that. But he, he, the message was from Jesus, it's time to kill the Passover lamb. And that's what Calvary is all about. It was time to kill the Passover lamb. And Jesus on this occasion became the Passover lamb because death was upon all of us and Jesus was the lamb of sacrifice on the cross at Calvary and the blood of Jesus was on the post of our hearts and lives and death's angel passed over us. See? But you know, I want to give you all one unique little thing before uh, we discuss what we've talked about and here's the unique little thing. Back there in Exodus, when, when God was giving the instructions to Moses and Aaron and uh, to tell the people what to do on this, when this plague would come, the plague of death would come and he was telling them how to, how to take a lamb for the family and, and how to, uh, to take that lamb and cook it. And listen now, you you got to get all this and don't leave any of it behind. You got, to, you got to eat all of this Passover lamb. You take his blood to cover your sin, but you got to take the lamb and you got to take all of him. You can't leave none of him behind. I'm going to preach on that one of these days. Glory. You, you, got, you just got to realize what this Jesus is. You got to realize all those things that he's gone through are you got to know that none of them are just for folly. And it's not just for Baptists. you got to know that what Jesus did was for everybody, everywhere, all over the world. We all need Jesus. Amen? He became our Passover. When Philip was called away out there, Philip was man apt to teach. He was full of faith and full of wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, he was. He got called away over there, and when he got over there, he picked the scripture up. The deacons are apt to teach. He was apt to teach. When he saw that man struggling with Isaiah, he asked him about it, and he began to preach to him Jesus. Amen? See, that, that's, it. that's what we need to do from the church. We need to stop promoting our quartets and our choirs we need to stop promoting our preacher. What we need to promote from our churches is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Promote him and nothing else. Don't promote the fact that we've got a children's program or a youth program. Promote the fact that we got Jesus. And out of Jesus will spring forth all these ministries that we need to have. But we need to put Jesus in his proper place because there is, as the song says, something about that name. The children of Israel said in Psalms 134 that it was that name, the name of the Lord that has covered us and brought us out of there. Amen. And in the end of it all, Paul said, I have kept the faith. I have run the race. I have stayed on course. But now listen. I'm going to give you one more little thing. <laughs> I keep saying that and it gets later and later. But give you one more little thing. What happens to a man when he dies? Well, we know ju judgment. We're going to go to judgment, right? When we get to heaven, our judgment won't be for our sin. Our judgment will be for what we've done as Christians. That's the, that's the Christian judgment for, you know, did we do what we should have done? You won't lose your salvation. You might lose a crown, but you're not going to lose your salvation. 
And, and so you'll be there at that judgment. That's not the white throne judgment. That's the judgment seat of Christ. You'll be there. But let me tell you something. That's all good and that's great. We got to go there. Every one of us has got to go to a judgment seat. We either got to go to white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we got to die the second death or we got to live forevermore in Christ because he died the second death for us, the spiritual dead. He died that we could be born again. Did y'all get that? He, to, I mean, Christ, is, for you know, uh, Paul wrote in Romans that we are risen with him. As he lives, we live. If there ain't no life in him, we dead. But anyway, that's not the point I was trying to tell you. What's two things, three things you're going to get when you go to heaven? One of them? A what? That's, he jumped right on the one I wanted. That's it. A new name. We'll come back to that. What else we're going to get? Well, new body. And we're going to get a new song. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us sing psalms unto him. Well, hey, a, pit, a portrait of heaven is a lot of singing. A heavenly choir with a new song. That's pretty good, isn't it? Y'all know what happened to Moses uh, when, when they came over there? It, the song of Moses. It's right there. You can read it or sing it. You can go over there in the Bible and sing the song of Moses. It's pretty lengthy, but it's a, he, they sing about what God has done, the deliverance of God. I want to tell you something. There's something strange about a man or a woman. When God delivers them, all of a sudden they want to sing about it. They want to sing that, that song because there's a song now biting in their heart. Did you know, have you ever lost your song? Yeah. Sin will cause you to lose your song. Do you know Jesus lost his song as a man? Because of our sin. And so when you come to all these things, and you get down to the end of it, have a new home, have a new body, have a new uh, song and name. I like that name. You'll have a new name. The one who has a name above every name will rename me. Amen. It's probably going to be John or Matthew or I don't know what it's going to be. But I'll tell you one thing's going to be on the end of it, the redeemed. Amen. Because in John 1, 12, here's what it says. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's it. So think about this. Think on this stuff. I want to go back real quick and read the psalm one time we through. I want, I want you to hear it one more time. And we will be finished. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled about us. I want y'all to notice the abbreviations or the pronunciations and stuff or the, uh, the markings here of the of how they're separating thought. You see, the thoughts, it's, con it's a continuing thought. Our help is in the name of the Lord. So I want you to put all this fits and they just follow it along. Of course, these weren't in the original writing. The scribes didn't put that in there. They just, they started over here on this page and they went across here like that and come back over here. That would have been great for us left-handers, wasn't it? I knew there was something about being left-handed. So I can read the Hebrew better than because I can just go right across there. But that's what they did. And then the scribe, uh, when he was keeping the record, would come over here in the margin on those parchments and he would make notes. He'd make notes over here in, in about these things. It's all important. I just want to share that with you. And anyway, you see that happening there. It says, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us semicolon. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, comma, the stream had gone over our soul, semicolon. Then the proud waters had gone 
over our soul. Listen, period. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul, that's period. Our, here's some statements. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. Semicolon. The snare is broken. Come. And we are escaped. Period. Our help is in the name of the Lord. That's how we did that. Who have made heaven and earth, period. You see, it's a complete message. It's what could have been had it not been for our Lord. I'm glad that you and I don't live in worlds of what could have been. You know, you we see something and, oh, that thing happened, that wreck happened right in front of me. I could have been killed. There's no could have beens when we walk with the Lord, guys. He orders our steps and he knows our way. Lean not, the preacher said, to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and what will he do if we do? He will direct our path. So there we have it and there's our conclusion. Had it not been for the Lord, had it not been for the Lord, that's what could have happened. God has taken care and he has made a means of you to escape the temptation of not accepting his son. So, okay, uh, who's got comments or discussions or questions? How do y'all feel?